Hi, this is Helma Volk. A couple years ago, I was at a lecture given by a Canadian nutritionist, and he claimed, among other things, that in Canada, uh, for preventing the flu, they had much better results with vitamin D3 than in the United States, where Tamiflu was more the thing recommended. And what is vitamin D3? Well, it's a vitamin, but it's really more of a hormone, a steroid, and we get it from the sunlight. Our skin manufactures it. The trouble is, uh, the further north from the equator you get, in the cooler months, most people do not get sufficient vitamin D. It can be that you hear the vitamin D3 or just vitamin D. Well, there's three forms of vitamin D. D3 is what your skin manufactures, and it's also found in a lot of supplements. And the liver knows exactly what to do with each vitamin D anyway and converts it to what you need. Now, the minimum daily requirements have been going up gradually uh, in the United States and in some other countries too because originally it was just thought that vitamin D was necessary uh, for the health of your bones. You, can't, you cannot absorb calcium into your bones without vitamin D. And that's true, but they did not look at all the other things that we now know, or that is now known about vitamin D and how almost miraculous it is in preventing many diseases. And in the book, The China Study, uh, which is a great book, I just got it from the library, uh, and uh, as you go further north from the equator, there are a lot of diseases that are found in northern, the further north you go, that are not found uh, in more uh, temperate, uh, tropical latitudes uh, because many months out of the year we're wearing clothes. And vitamin D3 can only be manufactured with UVB rays from the sun. And in the wintertime, and where I live in North Idaho, there's seven months out of the year where most people are not seeing the sunlight. And it's not found in enough foods. Uh, the food that has the most is salmon, and followed by some other fishes, but you've got to be really careful where you get your fish from because there's mercury levels and other uh, heavy metals in fishes in, in many of the waters. And you get from vitamin, uh, you get vitamin fortified milk and vitamin fortified uh, orange juice and a few other things, but there's not a lot of vitamin D, you know, that you can get from food. So, under ideal conditions, what you want is 15 minutes of sunlight exposed to 40% of your body, which is your arms and legs and, and back. And if you're in California or Florida or somewhere like that, you can get that, but it should be between the hours of they say 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, so you're getting more direct sunlight. And if a person, even a person who lives in Florida, if they're jogging early in the morning when it's cooler, they're not getting their vitamin D from the sunlight. And, and you know, they say, well, the flu is worse in the wintertime, and it is, and for a very uh, uh, a great variety of reasons, uh, <laughs> if you get run down in the wintertime, and people are inside a lot. Uh, there's no more picnics, there's no more barbecues. Their kids are back in school, they're in close confinement, and your snotty-nosed kid, uh, or a snotty-nosed kid, gets, uh, <laughs> you know, his infection with other kids. And parents of snotty-nosed kids, uh, <laughs> snotty-nosed kids, go to work and it spreads around, and, and all that stuff. Plus, your rundown starting at Halloween from all the candy, and then there's the office parties uh, following Thanksgiving, and at Thanksgiving you're eating too much, and you're eating pies and cakes and cookies and drinking too much, and then the office parties where you're eating all kinds of stuff you shouldn't, the cakes and the cookies, and drinking too much, and every club has their holiday parties, and then there's the holidays, and then there's New Year's, and you know, by then you've probably got the flu. And one thing that's not considered is the vitamin D3, how 
so many people are deficient. In fact, it's estimated that 93% of the people in the United States are, are deficient. And even if you're in a southern climate, if you don't get outside uh, during those uh, times, uh, you're not getting your vitamin D3 because you cannot get it through windows, you cannot get it through clothes. <laughs> uh, you can get it from UVB safe tanning beds and uh, according to Dr. Merkula, uh, you can get it. You want to build up to about 15 minutes a day to get your full vitamin D, but there are medical societies that say no, no tanning bed is safe. So there's a little controversy there. And in fact, vitamin D itself as to how much you need is a little bit controversial. Uh, how much you need the you know it's amazing that the recommended daily requirements vary uh, from country to country to country and uh, how much you need uh, the toxicity the toxicity levels are much 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 higher than were ever thought vitamin D is fat soluble and it was thought because it's fat soluble uh, you don't need much for toxicity and that, that's proven not to be true. I was looking on the internet as to how much is toxic and uh, I was reading a, a Mayo Clinic blurb that said, you know, a person who takes 50,000, which is a huge amount, of international units of, <laughs> of vitamin D a day for several months can have toxic levels. I was also reading that it's a deficiency in vitamin K2 that produces those toxicity levels and vitamin K2 is a, a vitamin I had never even heard of and probably most people have never heard of. And you can find that in some bacteria that can manufacture it in your gut. It's found in some fermented vegetables and some fermented cheeses. And if you want more information on that, I will give you to a website that is, let me read it here, um, Grassroots Health dot com and it's not just preventing the flu that vitamin D is good for. Uh, according to Carol Begley of the grassroots health dot com there's uh, up to 16 or cancers that it can help prevent. Uh, in the, the book the, the China study uh, the further north you go the more susceptible people are, the more common uh, autoimmune diseases are. Rheumatism, uh, osteoporosis, uh, multiple sclerosis, and, and on and on. And very closely associated with less and less vitamin D. Now, they say 15 minutes of sunlight four times a week will give you an adequate supply. And how much does your skin make? It varies with how dark your skin is. Dark skinned people make less for the same amount of time in the sun. Uh, if you're obese, uh, it takes more vitamin D because being fat soluble, uh, the fat dilutes it. And if you're in the sunlight for 20 minutes, uh, how much vitamin D do you make? Well, it could be anywhere from 10,000 to 50,000 international units. And that's quite a bit. Can you get an overdose of vitamin D from being in the sun? No. You cannot do that. Uh, your body knows how much you need and it will, you know, stop manufacturing after a certain point. And obviously a lot of people, rightly so, are afraid of the sun because of all the cancer and skin damage risks and so forth. But you cannot get vitamin D through sunscreen, so it's recommended if you're out in the sun to use uh, to go without sunscreen for 15 minutes and then put it on and then the bottle says you need it to put it on 15 minutes before sun exposure, so there's a little bit of, you know, what the heck do you do? If you're getting it from supplements, uh, the minimum data requirements are somewhere like 800 uh, for an average adult uh, up to 1,200 or 1,500, and these things vary from from wherever you're reading them uh, to an older person, because well, older people don't make as much vitamin D to exposure to the sun. But 
frankly, uh, if you look at the site I just uh, recommended, uh, grassrootshealth.com, and I have absolutely nothing to do with that site. They're just, uh, you know, promoting the importance of vitamin D. Uh, and I was looking on the internet for, for various things, and there was a study done at St. George's Hospital in New South Wales by a Dr. Terry Diamond, and, um, and taking people with vitamin D deficiency, which was probably most of them, but he gave uh, a test study, 20, excuse me, 2,000 international units uh, for three months, and another test study, 5,000 international units for three months. And the, the one given 2,000 uh, international units did not improve their, their vitamin D deficiency, whereas the group that was giving 5,000 uh, <laughs> international units did. And even the Conservative uh, Institute of Medicine has concluded that taking 10,000 uh, international units a day uh, has no adverse effects. So there's a lot more information you can get on uh, the grass, the grassrootshealth.com if you want more information. Like I said, I'm not associated with them. Uh, I just wanted to, to, to bring this to your attention because so many people are deficient in vitamin D. And let me tell you a little story. Uh, I was talking about vitamin D with a friend of mine and uh, her mother was diagnosed with MS 30 years ago, <laughs> she was not only diagnosed with it, she was wobbling around, she could hardly stand up. And uh, she went to a very unique doctor, and this was 30 years ago, so my friend is a little not sure what the details or what kind of doctor it was, but he said, you know, the, the minimum daily requirements uh, of, of vitamins are hooey, really. And <laughs> so she was giving, uh, given pretty mega doses on different vitamins and she does not remember what vitamins they were. I'm sure vitamin D was included as well as lecithin which uh, helps uh, with the sheaths around the nerve fibers uh, and it completely reversed her multiple sclerosis and 30 years later she's probably in her 80s now <laughs> and uh, quite healthy, happy and showing no effects of the multiple sclerosis. And uh, another comment uh, people might ask is, what about these daylight bulbs? What about the, you know, full spectrum bulbs? And they don't have the UVB rays, the ultraviolet B rays that, that you need. However, they can be helpful in, in your mood <laughs> in the wintertime. And some people think erroneously that you need an expensive fixture because they see these uh, light fixtures sold in, in magazines for $100, $120 or whatever. And no, you can just go down to a, a good hardware store or those big box hardware stores and get, uh, they could be called full spectrum light bulbs or daylight bulbs. And they fit just about any fixture you've got. There's the long fluorescent ones, there's the screw-in ones, and uh, funny shaped ones you can get. So, uh, but they don't provide any any UVB rays that you need. Uh, so anyway, if you want to help prevent the cold and flu and uh, bunches of other things, uh, <laughs> think about vitamin D, especially as we're getting into the winter as I am during this video. I'm in late September right now. It's almost October, so I'm not wearing shorts and tank tops. <laughs> There's a visual for you. and. Uh, it's going to be another seven months before I will. 